Zx stars of Reddit. What are the dirty secrets in your industry? I've got two friends who worked for a sex text company. Horny dude sent texts to a number from the back of a magazine with some hot lady in the photo. My friends flirted back. With a side order of trying to get them to call the, presumably more profitable, phone lines. They'd talk about what they were wearing. What the men would like to do to them. How horny the text from the customers made them. Both of my friends were dudes. I've worked for a fetish clip site for about 7 years now. I've been involved in production a handful of times mostly doing camera work. But sometimes being a slave for a clip. Very light stuff like foot or armpit worship. One time I was doing camera for a trampling clip. Where the two doms were standing on this slave insta lettuce. But having a casual conversation. As if they weren't even aware. That they were standing on some dude's face and stomach and junk. At about mid scene one of the girls changes her footing. And steps a little lower on the guy's abdomen. And the guy instantly lets out this huge fart PR. We all just died laughing and had to take a break to gather ourselves. Easily the funniest thing that ever happened to me while filming a clip. I dated a girl a few years back that did online 30 for a small company based out of Florida. It was ran by a couple in their late 30s. She only was supposed to do solo stuff, showering self-pleasure, fake off, etc. But they began to pressure her to do stuff with the owners on cam which she was completely against. She got out of the business and had to take the company to court to have all of her videos and pics pulled from their websites. Woodrocket has a YouTube channel with the Ask Us Star series which will pretty much top anything discussed on this thread, puke, crap, period blood, an ape ball jammed into a bag, peen sores, drugs, stalkers, being stranded on a shack in Brazil are the ones I vividly remember. Not a 30 star, but knew a guy who starred in a semi-mainstream Bang Brothers-esque video. A lot of the girls gag and vomit during BJS, and they edit it out. But in some scenes you can see traces of stomach chunks on the guy's leg. Also, a lot of the girls squirt out bits of rectal juice during all scenes. They try to carefully edit it in post. But sometimes you can still see traces of feckle juice both on the girl's anus and the guy's manservant. Friend and his GF did camming from home. The payment system was set up in quarters of $500, so you had to make $500 in order to cash out. They didn't get enough clicks, ended up working a ton, and never got paid. I assume this is how sites keep so many newcomers in and out. Some stay, of course. BC they get popular, but it was pretty sleazy. Buddy was just trying to make an extra 250 before end was due slash. Anal scenes aren't as glamorous as they appear in the actual videos. I've worked behind the scenes of numerous scenes where during the sex, the filming had to stop because the female, or male depending on the scene, had to clean up, which is going to happen every now and then if you're doing anal sex. But professional sites make you think that it's always perfectly clean and free of any number two incidences. Not the case. Obvious throwaway. Now X worked for a guy that specialized in foot fetish and tickling videos. Mind you we did not break up because of this. I actually found it quite amusing. The owner was a pretty positive nice guy actually. With a very young daughter and a baby mama who was not quite nice. Secret number one. There are so many girls that try to get into this underaged. He was a stickler for reading, and if you even forgot your ID the day of filming you were out. Secret number 2, there could be a film studio in your apartment complex. Next store neighbor, like it's not exactly fancy studios here. His was a rented apartment, next to his real apartment. It's funny you'd walk in, and it's all done up with lighting. Various will made leather bondage equipment. Looks all normal from the outside. Secret number 3, there is paid prostitution. He had one client that would request sex from various girls on the website. After interviewing him and deciding his demeanor he decided to ask the girl's permission. Everything was good and I know she got like 3k plus USD just to sleep with the guy. Like I said before the guy that runs this is overall a good dude. He made sure the girls got paid and was safe. Not a 30 star but having seen this come up quite a bit if she's on her period. Doesn't matter. 
they literally shove a sponge up there, not a tampon. An actual sponge, and keep shooting. I've read horror stories of actresses who forgot the sponge was up there for a few days until the next shoot, and everybody gagging, when it comes out. Many big name 30 stars Moonlighters escorts. Not sure how well known that is. Sasha Gray went to my high school. She was kind of a slut. I once read an interview with Nicola Niston, let's not pretend most of us don't know her, where she said that most actresses are drug addicts and over almost people in 30 are horrible people you would never like to be friends with. You have to poop before anal shoots, while the director watches. Me before reading this thread, heh, this should be funny, probably bloopers and funny moments, needless to say, that I don't really feel like laughing now. I went to school to be a nutritionist, and my father was a biologist focused on scatology research, for which I was his assistant. After getting addicted to drugs and fricking up my in-house hospital career, I went into specialized fetish 30th. I moved to an Eastern European country to work as a nutritional advisor for the world's largest producer of scat 30th. I would have full patient charts and nutritional slash gastro profiles on the actors and actresses. If they wanted thick brown logs, I advised and provided my consultation. If they wanted green diarrhea, I gave them a supplement. One time I was in my office and was approached by the director. He asked me if there was any way I could help him figure out a way to train an actress to defecate while doing a stunt in a waist harness. I told him it was very constricting and would be very hard for her to release while hanging by the waist. Anyhow. He figured out how to harness her without it messing with anything. We pumped her full of fiber and laxatives, and did the scene. It was pretty fricked up. Fake snuff type crap, where she was supposed to hang to death and the killer laid under her, and got a scat facial from her, faked, death bowel loosening. She did great. So did the actor below. I don't agree with faking, that sort of violence. But the production level was impressive. Okay. So most of these are pretty damn scary and depressing so I'll lighten it up something that is a bit less of either. When I was 18, I got a job at the call center of a local ISP. Back when that was thing, most ISPs also had some kind of side hustle somewhere in the legal sex work industry. The ISP I worked at had rooms for cam shows and sitting right behind me were the operators for the phone sex lines. These rooms where the girls on staff would do their shows were not very private. They were just ordinary conference rooms made up to look like bedrooms and living rooms. They also didn't block the windows in the doors. Now we are all about the same age, and so we all got along pretty well. Well enough that I could get away with freaking with them during their shows. Funny notes, or a surprise pair of press tams in the window, or whatever I could think of to get a chuckle during their show. I had to endure the occasional slug in the arm while in a call, but it was totally worth it. Those antics were pretty light-hearted and genuinely fun. The darker crap happened in the chat rooms during the cam shows. You see, while it was acceptable for friends of the cam girls to flirt and prank with one another, everyone in the company got unlimited access to all of the company services. If you knew where to look, you could get your own company issued free account. This was more popular with the creeps in the office because they thought they were anonymous. I didn't participate in the chat rooms much as I was usually too busy with work while at my desk, so I don't remember many of the specifics. But quite a few cowalkers were shown the door right after being presented with chat logs. It seemed like a sketchy place to work at the time. But after seeing all the comments in this thread, seems quite sex positive in comparison. I've longed to stop watching 30 and this thread might have just done it. Not related to 30, and not as star myself, but my puppy finally rang a bell to the door to get let out. She is cute. Here come the not as star, but, comments. This thread is disturbing. Not a 30 star, again. Sorry, but I worked in a 30 store back in the 90s for 6 years and we received a magazine called AVN, Adult Video News. It was filled with gossip columns which I read all the time, because I was bored out of my mind. It was all fist fights, drug overdoses, connections with organized crime, and federal investigations. A few times a year you would read about a sk star who was HIV positive. I've personally never done it, but I have a friend who runs a fetish website. 
She asked me to do fetish pregnancy wrestling when I was pregnant. She also asked if I would do some feet stuff. I respectfully declined though. She's told me stories of different fetish stuff she does. She does the smoker's cough fetish stuff and fakes the coughing. She offered me $800 to be on set for 8 hours, not filming the full time, but had to stay around, and food was provided for the pregnancy stuff. Never got a full pricing for the feed stuff. Why do people complain about that this thread doesn't have a NSFW tag? Is it an etiquette thing I'm unaware of? As far as I can tell, if the title has the word 30 in it, I feel like it's a safe assumption. I'll be honest. Reading this thread has turned me off of professional 30 quite a lot. I wasn't the biggest fan anyways, because it always seemed too fake to me. But now. I get off to some pretty rough stuff sometimes, but it's just fantasy and I always just assume that for the most part it's acting slash the girl was into it. This thread has me really worried about what I've looked at in the past now. If you're looking for ethical 30 erotic films point com is the place to go. Everyone involved is willing, enthusiastic and paid well. It, all of the reasons I read erotica, nobody gets hurt. It's just some dude at home writing on a computer when he gets the time. Have a close friend who was pretty well known 10, 15 years ago. Things she told me, hopefully some of this has changed. The 30 industry does not use the most updated HIV testing methods. STDs are extremely common. The smell on a 30 shoot is disgusting. When a girl gags on a pen and a tear might come out. A lot of times the tears are from crying, not gagging. As a woman you can tell your manager or agent of agency things, like I don't do anal, and they might tell you okay, but you will be booked for anal at some point, and when you show up, and say you won't do it, they will say fine, but we have no use for you, and you go home empty handed. It's common for a woman, to run to the bathroom, and vomit during a shoot. Other than this, it's a great place, to meet people and network. I ran a security business and I have met a fair share of 6 stars. They would hire one or two of my contractors to watch their backs during public shows and the inevitable private VIP wink wink nosed wink wink rooms. The stories they tell is one of the reasons I have reservation regarding legalized prostitution. MFW this thread isn't marked NSFW. If you care about your personal health and refuse to do nasty stuff to your body in an effort to look extreme. They really don't give a single crap about you. Won't do ass to mouth, ass to vag, non-body safe items in your holes. You won't be back for another shoot. Welp can't watch 30 anymore. God, could somebody make a really big, ethical, no closed doors type 30 company, or like 30 union or something? Obviously 30th's never gonna die, but we could always make it safer and legit. Pretty simple if you have the money to start it I'd think, and you weren't a total peen. Is this one of those reddit posts that will appear in the Daily Mail online soon in the guise of some sort of journalism? 1. Cutting a hole in a pumpkin, then freaking it is way more fun that you might realize. 2. Most 30 outfits are bought at low end stores for a one and done. Why waste money on good lingerie and outfits? 3. There is such a thing as a peen that's too big to frick. Can you do it? Sure, but at a certain size it just doesn't feel pleasurable. 4. If you're doing the modeling part properly, you'll be in pain in the morning. The positions that look good for camera involve unpleasant contortions. A girl I was with was a cam girl for a while, while she was unemployed. A guy who was in love with her hacked her account, and got into her FB and ML, and sent copies of private conversations she would have with the guys who were paying her for private shows to me in an effort to get rid of me, so he could have her to himself in his delusional mind. She was a cam girl way before I met her. So all of these conversations happened before we met, but the hacker guy told me they were from a few days ago. So initially I was upset thinking she had gotten back into camming, and didn't tell me about it. Turns out they were all time stamped from like 4 years ago something I found out after I was already upset. The first few were standard stuff I would expect from a guy who was paying for a private show. Then the messages started getting darker and darker, and by the time I got to the end of them, I felt like I didn't know her anymore. I've never been unemployed and desperate for money to survive, so I don't know the levels I would go if it came down to it, but this beautiful smart woman 
that I had known for years, did some really disturbing things for money. She had a handful of guys she was sleeping with for $300 a pop. She had been meeting one guys at his office three times a week to blow him for $100 a pop. She had done lesbian shows with her best friend, I never would have suspected, and numerous BJS on cam with her best guy friend, also never would have suspected, but then she went down a dark path, doing scat stuff, vomit videos, and even crap with animals. I was stunned. At first I thought maybe they were all faked and photoshopped, but there were details in the conversation, that a rando love struck hacker wouldn't know about her, that I did and I knew. The conversations were written in her voice I had read millions of messages from her, and I could tell she had been the person in those chats. I never told her about the hacker, or knowing her private past. She's a different woman now, and like I said, before I don't know what I would be willing to endure to survive, if I had no help. So I don't judge her. But sometimes when we are watching TV I look over at her, and think to myself, L what else are you hiding? A credit should have a filter system by which we can filter out not her, but comments. TLDR this thread, 30 is fricked up go watch cartoons. My cousin used to work in pre and post production editing. She eventually quit, because the long hours we are taking a toll on her health. Here's what she told me, the freakier the scene the higher the pay. A lot of them are really just doing it, because it's a ton of money and it's made fast. Most of them are doing it to fund their college tuition. Cam shows is where the most money is made. G slash G pays the least. I'm Vernon Masters aka his royalness King Dingaling. First of his name. Breaker of ass. Pontiff of house dung. One thing about working in 30 that I don't think a lot of people know about is the stench. Oh god. The stench. You get a few dozen people and cram them into a brightly lit, humid office setting and you're setting yourself up for an ass sweat sauna. After a few hours of shooting backdoor scenes on sopping wet black leather couches, something catalytic happens to the molecules in the air, the odor becomes so thick that it's visible to the naked eye. No bullcrap. I remember sometimes during the hot summer we had to walk around wearing swimming goggles in the building, because the wafting aroma of ass butter and balls was strong enough to make your eyes water. I mean this smell was so pungent it stuck to your hair and clothing. In 77 we had to have a decontamination shower installed at the exit of the building, so that people wouldn't trail the scent out, and endanger the locals. I probably shouldn't say this on reddit, but we actually had a small child suffocate from the toxic smell once in 86. Yup, little Timmy as we called him, couldn't handle a stench of that magnitude. The second his little face made contact with the essence it melted his eyebrows clean off. There's a framed photo of him hanging in the common area so no one forgets the sacrifices we make to bring you your daily nut. Well I needed more arguments to help myself from watching 30th. I guess that's it. Till Reddit is not only filled with introverted gamers, but also loads of x30 workers. Time to take a shot. I'm only supposed to put 6 olives on your foot long. You all deserve to know. I live in a third world country. Used to be a regular in an internet cafe and there was this guy who was also frequent there. He would video chat with people. His camera was linked to a looping video of a topless girl typing and smiling. He would ask for donations through PayPal. It was fricked up thinking that these people don't know it's all fake. Not as Xxxstar, star, but one of my previous roommates was one I say this loosely because she called herself that. In reality, she was a hooker who brought her johns to the house which usually sucked ass. She was sometimes paid in heroin and sometimes her customers were found passed out and usually naked in the living room. I have so many stories about her. But here's a good one, because I got paid. She set up a cam to make it look like they were shooting a 30 scene, because the cops have came to the house and busted her and her johns for prostitution and drug possession. So she tells me she needs $500 for rent, and one of her johns is willing to pay 2 grand for 2 girls to humiliate him. Nothing sexual like penetration or him touching us basically private and public humiliation and feminization stuff. The kicker was he wanted a video of his session with us. So we started shooting the video. My room had shot up and passed out midway. Her John was about to bail without paying us and well frick that noise I was getting my payday for this crap my room had talked me into. So his pin was locked in a chastity device and I had the key locked in my room. 
He of course wanted it unlocked, but I wasn't gonna let that happen, until I got paid at least a grand for this crap. So he just bails leaving a bunch of crumped hundreds which sucks. However, a week later he comes back begging to be let out of his cage cause his wife wanted to have sex with him, and he was too ashamed of telling her his fetish. Not to mention he hired a hooker. So I ended up getting my payday. My roommate got her end paid. And I made another $500 selling him my panties, because I got rent too. TLDR, not as star, but merchant for hire. Make sure to like and subscribe so we can watch together.